as with estrogen in women, some are good and some are bad. And the same thing applies to men. So I'm going to hopefully take you down a, a fun journal club pathway to look at what the medical literature says on what we should do and what we shouldn't do and why. So what I'm going to review is, and we heard our two speakers yesterday talk about testosterone and prostate cancer and that there's essentially no link between testosterone and prostate cancer. In fact, it may be almost the opposite uh, due to the effect on visceral fat, and somebody needs to do a study on that. But there's a lot of concern, and there's a lot of people that have come up to me uh, this week and talked about estrogen causing or provoking prostate cancer. And, and I asked where the literature support for that was, and I get, well, you know, so-and-so said, or, you know, I heard this, or I heard, or I heard that. And again, I ask, well, where's the literature support? I'll show you where the literature support for that is. Does testosterone that raises estrogen levels cause prostate cancer? Well, so far to date, we haven't seen where testosterone raises prostate cancer in probably over 50 years of studies. But nevertheless, when we administer testosterone, it does raise estrogen levels. And does that estrogen really cause prostate cancer like some think? Well, we, we have to step back for a second and try to understand the difference between association and causation. So let me review that for a minute. This morning I talked about estradiol and estrone in women and that postmenopausal women that have a high BMI or insulin resistant or obese produce a high amount of estrone, which is estrogen. But their estradiol levels are extremely low and those women frequently are thought to make enough estrogen that they don't need it even though their estradiol levels are very low but the risk of cardiovascular disease is very high. So you can extrapolate and perhaps ex expand and say, well, high estrone levels in women are causing that heart disease that they're at risk for. Well, it's really the loss of the estradiol that's the problem, and the, the high estrone is an association, maybe not causation, but it's associated with. Well, because high estrone level is up in Obese women, does that mean that estrogen, therefore, is the cause of heart disease? Well, no, of course not. But you can see how that can be extrapolated. Last year, I lectured in Japan, and I was talking about testosterone in women, and a urologist there said, you shouldn't use testosterone in women because it causes breast cancer. I said, no, it doesn't. He said, yeah, it does. So he cited a couple articles in the literature where, indeed, high levels of testosterone in premenopausal women, mostly with PCOS, were associated with an increased risk of breast cancer. And there's about 10 articles in the literature that I can show you where high levels of testosterone and premenopausal women are associated with, with breast cancer, which proves that you shouldn't give testosterone to women because it causes breast cancer, right? But that's what the studies say. What don't you understand about the results of the study? Of course, this morning I talked about it, and yesterday I talked about Testosterone is actually an FDA-approved treatment for breast cancer. And there's probably 50 studies in the literature showing that testosterone administration to women protects against breast cancer. So which is it? You have to understand the difference between an association. Testosterone is associated with an increased risk in premenopausal women. That's probably related to insulin resistance and loss of progesterone. But it's there, and it's high, and therefore it gets associated with it. But it's not causative. It's an association. So you have to do a clinical trial in order to figure out what's what. If you do clinical trials giving testosterone to women or using it, you'll see in every study to date that the testosterone actually protects against breast cancer because of its apoptotic effect on breast cancer cells. So see the difference between association and causation? They're different, and you have to understand that when we look at estrogen in men. Having said that, does estrogen prevent or treat prostate cancer? I'm told here by many people that it causes it. I use it as a treatment for it. So which is it? A lot of you are using aromatase inhibitors in men and keeping estrogen levels very low because you assume or have been told or taught that estrogen causes prostate cancer in men. I will refute that. But yet everyone has taught that, but there's no scientific literature to support that. Yeah, but men with high estrogen levels 
are more susceptible to prostate cancer. That's an association. It's not a causation. See the difference? So we use aromatase inhibitors in men to lower estrogen. Is that increasing lifespan or is it actually decreasing lifespan? I'll show you we're using aromatase inhibitors is actually decreasing lifespan. Then why are we using it? Well, because we have to lower the estrogen because estrogen is bad because I heard someone say that. Maybe that's an association, but it's not causation. And you really have to look at randomized trials to see if raising estrogen actually causes those effects. There's no evidence in the literature, and I'll show you that. So does use of estrogen in men increase or decrease lifespan? If you look at the Synagenics website, they have a really nice little section on estrogen in men. And they cite several articles where elevated estrogen levels in men are associated with an increased risk of heart disease, congestive heart failure, and death. They also cite a couple articles that show that elevation of estradiol in men is associated with less cardiovascular disease. So which is it? The same thing applies to men as in women. In women, high estrone or estrogen levels can be associated with an increased risk of heart disease. It's an association, it's not causation. The same thing applies to men. Obese men, diabetic, insulin-resistant men, have a higher risk of heart disease and a higher risk of congestive heart failure. And when you measure estrogen levels in those men, indeed, because of the aromatization in their fat, they will have higher estrogen levels. But that's not causative, it's an association. Because every study that we've looked at by giving estrogen to men, we see protection against heart disease. One's an association, it's not causation, and you have to understand the difference between that. Life, expectant, uh, Life Extension Magazine does the same. They cite several articles where high levels of estrogen in men are associated with increased risk of heart disease, so they're recommending chrysin in every man to lower their estrogen levels. It's an association, it's not causation. And I will show you that giving estrogen to men or raising it, either via testosterone or estrogen itself, protects against heart disease and strokes and diabetes. There's an association, there's a causation, and you really need to be able to understand the difference to be able to sort through these articles. And I hope that you understand that now. You need to in order to understand the lecture. Well, how this whole thing got started was, um, I'll show you in a second, that there was a study done where they had rats with prostate cancer, and they gave them both estrogen and testosterone, and guess what? The prostate cancer grew. Now, that proves that estrogen in men causes prostate cancer, correct? Well, that's the extrapolation. And the authors of this study said, we postulate, theorize, fantasize, that estrogen may be responsible for the high prevalence of prostate cancer in men. Postulate may be, perhaps. It's an association in rats when they gave testosterone and estrogen together. Don't extrapolate that to estrogen in men causes prostate cancer, but some of us tend to do that. This is evidence-based medicine at its finest, isn't it? We postulate, perhaps, in rats, so therefore, maybe, if there's life on Earth, there might be life on Mars, too. No, 